Well, hey guys, if you are not taking a shower at night before you go to bed, I think this video may have you reconsider your bathing practices because we are gonna be talking all about airborne substances that your skin is exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis that can actually lead to not only skin problems, but health problems as well. Aeroallergens are various airborne substances or inhalants that your body can be allergic to, or those substances may simply just be super irritating on your skin. What kind of problems can these cause? Airborne contact dermatitis, or ABCD, can lead to a pretty significant rash on your face most commonly. It tends to impact the upper eyelids. The upper eyelids are a particularly vulnerable site on your face for airborne contact dermatitis because First of all, when you close your eyes with blinking, those aerial allergens can land right there. And then when you open your eyes, well, they kind of get sucked onto the skin through the accordion-like folds of the muscles around the eyes. That, plus the fact that eyelid skin is super thin, makes it an area much more vulnerable to the effects of aero allergens on the skin. Airborne contact dermatitis also can involve the neck and the upper chest behind the ears and underneath the chin. One of the hallmark findings of airborne contact dermatitis that distinguishes it from other rashes on the face is that it tends to spare the nose. But outside of the rash of airborne contact dermatitis, airborne substances can impact the skin in other ways. Airborne allergens and irritants can lead to flares of and worsening of atopic dermatitis, otherwise known as eczema, and also can aggravate symptoms of asthma, like wheezing, shortness of breath, cough. Symptoms of allergic rhinitis will get flared up when aeroallergen counts are high, and this can lead to a runny nose. It also can cause what is known as allergic shiners, dark under eye circles, a prominent horizontal crease underneath the eyes known as Denny Morgan folds. I previously did a whole video about these and how they differ from under eye wrinkles related to skin aging. Airborne substances can also aggravate the eyes themselves, leading to a conjunctivitis, red eyes that are itchy, watery, that makes you rub your eyes more frequently. Airborne substances can trigger hives and it can also trigger anaphylaxis, a severe life-threatening type of allergy. Specifically, latex gloves that have the powder. If that powder becomes aerosolized, it can actually lead to anaphylaxis, which is life-threatening in people who are allergic to latex. You can't talk about skin problems related to airborne substances without mentioning pollution. Pollution is a major driving factor for a variety of inflammatory skin diseases. For example, urban areas with higher amounts of pollution, people there tend to have more stubborn acne as it relates to exposure to pollutants. Pollution is also associated with more stubborn and severe eczema. Recently, I did a video on things you need to know about anti-aging and the skin, and I highlighted how much of an impact pollution can have on skin aging uh, through the generation of free radicals through heavy metals on the skin surface, this damages proteins, lipids, DNA in our skin, contributes to premature wrinkles, and really depletes our skin's antioxidant defenses. The most common airborne allergens are gonna be pollen and dust mites. Pollens can come from weeds, trees, grasses, rye, also from a variety of floral plants like daisies and lilies. Animal danders from cats, dogs, rabbits, rodent dander, rodent fur, and rodent urine from rats, mice, guinea pigs can be a problem problem as well. Debris from cockroaches. And of course, mold and fungal spores. A lot of the allergens that you can find in personal care products can also be in other things that are aerosolized. Specifically, the family of preservatives that I always mention in the Dollar Tree, the isothiazolinones. Methyl isothiazolinone and methyl chloroisothiazolinone. Those are frequently present in like shampoos, rinse off products, but they're also present in things that can be aerosolized, like paint, um, as well as cleaning products that are gonna be sprayed. I also always point out that fragrance is a pretty common allergen, and it is aerosolized frequently in perfumes, body sprays, room fresheners, diffusers. As a matter of fact, there were some cases recently in Miami of people developing allergic airborne contact dermatitis to fragrance from fragrance diffusers in an Uber. As you can imagine, being inside of a car, stuck in traffic, 
the car is diffusing fragrance. That is a setup for airborne allergic contact dermatitis and those who are sensitive to fragrance and allergic to it. I like to point these things out to you guys because there's a tendency to attribute all skin problems to skincare products. And eyelid dermatitis is something a lot of people deal with and they're either gonna be looking for an eye cream or something to solve their eyelid dermatitis when in reality, it might actually be something that you are being exposed to that's landing on your eyelids, causing the problem for you and simply avoiding it is how to go about clearing it up. The prevalence of airborne contact dermatitis varies a lot from region to region and seasonally, depending on the types of plants that are in a given area or molds and things of that nature. Individuals who have atopic dermatitis are at a much greater risk because they have a greater tendency to develop allergic diseases, including allergic contact dermatitis. Aero allergens from dust mites are especially problematic for people who have atopic dermatitis. Pollen counts are gonna vary a lot from different regions and different countries, depending on, again, the types of trees and grasses that grow locally. For example, in Scandinavia, birch is the main pollen allergen, whereas in North America, it is ragweed and deciduous trees. Olive pollen is actually pretty prevalent in the Mediterranean. Feverfew and mugwort in Eastern Europe and India, and the Japanese cedar throughout Japan. In the case of airborne allergic contact dermatitis, how do you even know that you have that? How is it diagnosed? A dermatologist can diagnose this by looking at your skin, the distribution of the rash, as I mentioned, upper eyelids especially, by taking your history a history of relevant exposures and your occupation may guide them to lean towards airborne allergic contact dermatitis, then they might do something called patch testing, where basically we put different allergens on your back and have you come back and we see if there's a reaction there and that can help determine what you are allergic to. And in some cases, uh, skin prick testing and blood tests for allergies may be necessary as well. How do you go about preventing exposure to these aerosolized compounds that can either be allergens or irritants or just not good for your skin health, things like pollution? Uh, avoidance is key, but that's easier said than done. It's pretty hard to avoid completely. In the case of pollens, be aware of allergenic plants in your area, pay attention to local pollen count forecasts, and try and stay indoors on days where pollen counts are high. Stay on top of household cleaning in areas that are prone to a lot of moisture, like basements, around the laundry area and in the bathroom. Make sure that you are not only keeping those areas super clean and dry, but that they have good ventilation so as to reduce mold formation. Mold spores, they can be very problematic for not only your skin, but for tr triggering allergic uh, symptoms, rhinitis, runny nose, itchy eyes. And if you have asthma, they can really be a problem and they can trigger eczema flares. After you get out of the shower and you dry yourself off, don't leave wet towels hanging up in the bathroom. They don't dry very thoroughly there. Not only can that harbor molds and things, but it also can harbor bacteria that can then be transferred to your skin. It's just not a good idea. So make sure you're cleaning your towels regularly. This is especially true if you have a bathroom that just isn't well ventilated and a lot of humidity collects. You wanna make sure that you're not storing your used towels in the bathroom. It can further harbor molds and things. Now, if you have pets, you wanna be mindful to bathe your pets frequently to help with controlling pet dander, which is a common aerosolized allergen for a lot of people, especially people who have atopic dermatitis, but also pets pick up aeroallergens themselves on their fur and that can get transferred to you as well as to like your bedding, your pillow. So make sure that you are wiping your pet's coat off when they come back inside from taking them out so that you minimize bringing in those aeroallergens and transferring them to like your pillow and things, which you're then gonna later on go to bed and be exposed to that at night. That can trigger allergic symptoms, which tend to get worse at night, make your eyes watery, itchy, worsen the appearance of dark circles. So wipe your pets off when they come inside, bathe them regularly. Pollen counts tend to start rising in the early morning and peak in the afternoon, that's around the time when allergic symptoms can worsen. So if you're someone who goes outside uh, either you know, to enjoy the outdoors or you go outside to walk your dog around that time, just be mindful of the fact that you might be bringing in more pollen with you. If you, if you spend time outdoors, especially in the afternoon, make sure that you don't uh, like go inside and sit on your bed because that pollen 
and pollutants and things can transfer to your bedding and it's there waiting for you when you go to bed that night to aggravate allergic symptoms, atopic dermatitis if you have it, and you know, sniffling, sneezing, it can worsen itch and just be in a cult cause of problems for you and your sleep pattern, all sorts of issues. Let's talk about managing dust mites because as I said, for people who have atopic dermatitis, dust mites can really be a problem, but for everyone as a whole, and if you've got asthma, they can trigger asthma exacerbations. Dust mites are arachnids and they feed off of skin cells that you have shed off and they actually shed their exoskeleton, which can be aerosolized and cause allergic symptoms, but their poop has this casing around it that also can be aerosolized and trigger allergic uh, reactions, worsening eczema, worsening asthma, and just overall irritation. People always point out how you should be washing your pillowcase regularly to help prevent breakouts, but really the main reason to, one of the ma major reasons to wash your pillowcase frequently, as well as all of your bedding, is that it harbors dust mites that can trigger allergic diseases and aggravate the skin and cause irritation. You wanna make sure you're washing your bedding as well as any drapes in the bedroom in water that is at least 60 degrees Celsius, if not higher, to kill off the dust mites. Dust mite counts are highest in a carpeted bedroom. Consider getting rid of the carpet in your bedroom if, they're, if you're really sensitive and you think that that's a culprit for you, or at the very least, make sure you are regularly vacuuming not only the carpet, but like your headboard, the baseboards, you're removing um, all dust. The thing about dust mites is they come out in the dark. They, they're, they don't come out if it's light out. So if it's the daytime and you walk into a still room, you're, you're not gonna likely be exposed to them. But if you start move it, making the bed, moving the sheets around, adjusting the curtains, those allergens from the dust mites can be aerosolized and for people who are sensitive, it can trigger like an asthma exacerbation, runny nose and worsening of their eczema. Consider even getting a mattress cover or a pillow cover that is impermeable to dust mite allergens. Reactions and sensitivities to airborne substances are enough of a problem that in a lot of um, businesses and workplaces, they don't allow their employees to wear perfume because for people who are allergic to fragrance, this can really be a problem. And it also can trigger migraines and runny nose, allergic symptoms, and can aggravate asthma. But be mindful of the fact that other forms of aerosolized fragrance can be an issue for people too, like from counter sprays or a fragrance diffuser even in your car, as we saw those cases in Miami in the Uber. At the beginning of the video, I pointed out how if you're not somebody who takes a shower before you go to bed at night, you might consider after this video because one of the main benefits of showering at night before you go to bed is that it helps to remove airborne substances that have settled on your skin. And this is important because when you go to bed at night, um, there are some differences in how your skin behaves and the symptoms of itch and irritation, they're a lot more likely at night. So if you've got a layer of pollutants, dust mites, pollens, mold spores on your skin surface, that definitely can aggravate atopic dermatitis, asthma, seasonal allergies. But just think about it. I mean, your skin barrier, it's trying to heal and recover. It's trying to fight off free radicals from environmental exposures throughout the day. If you have that film of environmental milieu all over your skin. It's just a lot more going on and it really can be problematic for your health depending on if you have a background of, of allergies. The other reason to shower at, at nighttime though comes back to the dust mites. When you shower or bathe, if you like to, to soak in a tub, that's fine too. When you shower, when you bathe, you remove, you, you exfoliate the skin just, just by having the water come over the skin. Even if you don't use a washcloth or anything like that, just the water beating over the skin helps to kick off those skin cells, they're, they're those scaly cells, and that cuts down on what would otherwise be shed into your bedding and serve as food for those dust mites. So that's another reason to take a shower at night before you go to bed. Now, I know some people have an opposite schedule where they work night shifts, they sleep during the day. Shower when you get off of work before going to bed um, to remove 
the prior days or nights worth of exposures. Because even if you're working, say for example, you work in a hospital, you're gonna be exposed to things that are aerosolized possibly that could land on your skin and cause problems. You drive home in the early morning, pollen counts start to rise. So you definitely wanna take a shower um, and to remove sweat, which likewise is irritating. Sweat can enhance the irritating effects of air, airborne um, substances that land on the skin. Sweat is an irritant itself and it will enhance penetration of those airborne allergens once they land on the skin. If you've been outside enjoying the outdoors, which I do encourage people to do. I know I like um, my videos can kind of come across as though I heavily push staying indoors. I don't, I, you know, I really do encourage you to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. It's very good for your health. But if you, especially if you or somebody in your home has a background of allergic uh, skin condition or asthma, seasonal allergies, Definitely um, when you have been outside for a while, make sure when you come indoors that you change out of the clothing that you were wearing outdoors. Um, when you come inside, that can cut down on exposure in the home. And again, a lot of this is gonna vary depending on where you live geographically. Here in Houston, this is the aero allergen capital of the world. I am convinced because of the humidity, because of uh, the, the urban pollution, uh, because of all of the, we have a lot of roaches, we have a lot of pollens, a lot of molds. So this is, a, this is a climate where you really do have to be more mindful of those exposures. And if you're not, well, you will feel it. You will feel it. You'll feel a difference. Even if you don't have a background of eczema, a lot of people are allergic to all of the airborne, airborne substances that we're exposed to. So now if you live in a cold, dry climate, this will be, these things will be less of an issue for you. For example, dust mites can't even survive in Antarctica. So if your dust mite allergy is so bad, maybe consider relocating there. I'm kidding. All right, y'all, I hope this video was helpful in terms of highlighting yet another skin problem that a skincare product did not cause and won't necessarily solve uh, because these problems require you to manage your exposure to the triggering allergen or irritant. Now on the end slide, I'm going to link my video all about how jewelry might be the reason for your skin problem. So definitely give that a watch. Some similar concepts in that video of yet another common allergen and problem for the skin outside of skincare products. So definitely check that one out next. But if you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.